This is not your typical shepherd's pie. We're making it healthier, more flavorful, and with sweet potatoes. Hey there, I'm Lena Brazil, and you are watching Evolving Table, where we make healthier spins on classic recipes. And today that's in the form of this sweet potato shepherd's pie. With its hearty ground beef and veggie packed filling, and a super creamy sweet potato topping that's loaded with nutrients. The recipe you'll see can easily be made gluten-free, dairy-free, paleo, and even Whole30, so I'll be sure to go over those substitutions with you. All right, are you ready? Let's jump straight in and get to cooking. For this recipe, you'll need one and a half pounds of sweet potatoes. It doesn't really matter the size of the potatoes since we're going to be peeling and cubing them. However, it does matter that you have right at about one and a half pounds, so be sure to measure this out. Using a vegetable peeler, peel and remove the skin from your potatoes. Then, cut the peeled potatoes into one inch cubes. You want these to all be roughly the same size so they cook at a similar rate. Add the cubed potatoes to a large pot and then pour in cold water until they're covered by at least one inch. Turn the heat to high and bring the potatoes to a boil. Once boiling, reduce the heat to a simmer and cook for 10 to 12 minutes uncovered. Check to see if the potatoes are done by piercing the thickest portion with a fork. Drain the potatoes in a colander in the sink and then shake to remove any excess water. Depending on your desired texture, you can either add the potatoes back to the pot and mash them like you would mashed potatoes, or you can add them to a food processor. I've tried it both ways, and let me tell you, when you add them to the food processor, it makes them so super silky smooth, so that's the method that I'll be using today. All right, so just go ahead and pop those boiled potatoes into that large food processor. About a 10 to 12 cup one will work great, along with four tablespoons of melted butter. This is where you can use an oil or a vegan butter alternative if you're dairy free. Half a cup of milk. I'm using full fat oat milk today, but regular milk or any other plant-based alternative can be used. Three fourths teaspoon of salt. One fourth teaspoon of black pepper. And one eighth teaspoon of garlic powder process for 20 to 30 seconds or until the topping is smooth and there are no large clumps remaining. Now that we've got our sweet potato topping made, let's move on to that ground beef filling. It's best if you're using a leaner ground beef, such as a 93.7 or even a 90.10. An 85.15 will work but you'll need to make sure and drain any excess fat in order to prevent a runny filling. Place a large skillet over medium heat and add two tablespoons of oil, one cup of finely chopped sweet onion, and two ribs of celery that have been finely diced. Cook for three to four minutes or until they start to get tender. Then add three cloves of finely minced garlic and continue cooking for one minute. Push the vegetables to the side of the skillet and add one and a half pounds of ground beef. Ground chicken or turkey may also be used. Cook for seven to eight minutes or until there is no pink remaining. And now for that awesome trick I like to use. If you don't want your meat to have those large clumps, you can always use a potato masher and mash the meat until you get fine crumbles. Then mix in three tablespoons of tomato paste, two tablespoons of an all-purpose flour. I'm using a gluten-free one-to-one -one blend, but you can also always use a paleo flour blend instead. Next, pour in two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce and half of a cup of beef broth. Simmer over medium heat until the sauce begins to thicken. And then add in the remaining one cup of broth in one fourth cup increments. Wait between each addition for the sauce to thicken up. 
Once thickened, add 3 fourths teaspoon each of dried thyme, rosemary, and parsley. You'll get the best flavor if you use all three, but you can always substitute one for the other if you don't have them all available. 3 fourths teaspoon of salt, 1 fourth teaspoon of black pepper, and 1 and a half cups of frozen mixed vegetables. If you're paleo or Whole30, you're gonna wanna skip the corn here. Stir until well combined, and continue simmering until everything is heated through. Spray an 11 by 7 inch baking dish with nonstick cooking spray, and then spread out the ground beef filling in the bottom. You can use a 13 by 9 inch baking dish if that's all you have, but you'll need to decrease the cook time by about 5 to 10 minutes. Place dollops of the mashed sweet potatoes evenly spaced over the filling, and then spread it around to completely cover it. Try to leave some peaks of potatoes if you'd like your topping to get slightly crispy. Bake the shepherd's pie in a preheated 400 degree oven for 25 to 30 minutes. Pop it under a broiler set to high for two to three minutes at the end to get the topping even more crispy. Let it rest at room temperature for at least 15 minutes before serving so the sauce can thicken up. And then serve with a sprinkle of parsley. Mm. Oh man, regular shepherd's pie is getting a run for its money because guys, that sweetness from the potatoes pairing with that savory beef filling is so good. I cannot wait to hear what you think, so don't forget to let me know in the comments. And if you want a few more cozy comfort food ideas, make sure you check out these other healthy fall and winter recipes. Thanks so much for hanging out. I'll see you in the next one.